Hello and welcome to The Edge. I am thrilled to be your guide on today's exploration into the fascinating world of craftsmanship and entrepreneurial excellence. Our guest, Mr. Yinka Olagunju, the MD CEO of Home Collection, is here to share his expertise in furniture making and together we will travel through the captivating world that showcases the elegance of African woods and metals. The story of a master crafter. In a world where creativity meets innovation, Inca stands as a beacon of ingenuity, weaving together the rich tapestry of African woods and metals to create timeless pieces of artistry. From the intricate designs to the impeccable craftsmanship, each creation is a testament of his unwavering dedication to his craft. Join me as we embark on this enlightening journey, discovering the beauty and sophistication inherent in every curve, every grain, and every detail of Inca Olagunjo's masterpieces. Get ready to be inspired, amazed, uplifted as we uncover the stories behind the creation that graze our homes and enrich our lives. As the Edge presents the elegance of African woods and metals, the story of a master crafter. With our esteemed guest, Mr. Inka Olagunju, the adventure begins now. And right from school, I knew I was not going to work for anybody because the curriculum was such that you could leave school and be on your own, just like what a lot of schools are doing now. So this was something as far back as 1992. So we came out um, filled with a lot of stuff. And production engineering is an arm of mechanical engineering. So what I'm doing now is production engineering. Like all this furniture I produce, they are, big, they are built out of the principles of production engineering. From your background, you did um, production engineering. Yeah. There would have been so many things you would have decided to delve into. Why furniture? I didn't start with furniture. Okay. I started with um, metal works, oh. gates, railings, staircases, and co. And furniture you see is just a medium, like wood. You can see around us, there are a lot of other mediums I'm working with, media like steel and wood together. I can produce whatever or function with any material. So furniture is just one of it. And you know, in business, you have to work as per the demands. You know, so, and also the creativity in me just talk to furniture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. OK, so um, phone collections. Yeah. What sets the furniture apart from other, I mean, all over the place, the furniture, people making furniture for home. Um, what sets us apart is we are like the trailblazer blazer in terms of design. You know, we come up with the creative, like I don't feel bad when I'm copied. Because I also feel it's a way of adding, giving back and developing my country because one has the education. So for instance, if I make a sample, which is a masterpiece, and whenever I find it copied or reproduced, I feel very good because I feel I've given something to society. That's refreshing. Yeah. You could tell me, how do you source material? Because I don't know for so many people who are into production, there are more, some of their challenges would in, include um, how to get your raw materials or how to get the things you use to make your furniture. How do you source for your raw material? Well, it's so sad that whenever I leave this country, maybe I go to China, I find wood from Africa in China. So they pick wood from here, add value, and send it back to us. So <laughs> the material is here. We have all the wood. In China, you see wood, they stack it, they write sapele, but they call it sapele. Sapele? Yeah, but Our it is sapele. sapele, yeah. So, you know, this wood comes from here. So what matters most is sourcing the wood, adding value, and producing furniture. I'm sure the viewers are watching and they're wondering, ah, this person does not look like somebody who, who gets his hands dirty or designs. <laughs> yeah. Can you work, well, work us through a process, your creative process? How do you start? Do you start by first drawing it on paper and then you start? How, just give us an idea. Well, the truth is... Of what I'm sitting on for Yeah, yeah. At times, you know, creative people, mm. 
work from their brain. Hmm. So it's like you see a musician, he gets to the stage without any material and he sings. So if you're creative in production, once you get there, you have the design, what you want to, because I studied engineering, yeah. but I think I'm 90% of an artist than engineering. So the creativity in me, once I produce a sample, I don't draw. But if a client wants me to reproduce, yes, I can walk to the answer, reverse engineering, mm -hmm. you know, by picking the picture and working on it, that's fine. But if most of my designs are things from my imagination, e.g. like what you're seeing around here, the other things I imagine, and they don't really, to me, people see them and admire them so much, mm -hmm. but to me, I'm still looking for how to get it better. So you have to keep craving for perfection. The best part of you, you know, it's you're always trying to improve on what you have done. Yeah. Constantly improving. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. now for a journey like this, I know that it's not easy. Anyhow, we look at it starting from the beginning and where you are today. I'm sure there have been so many challenges. Can you tell us some of your challenges? The truth is, nothing in life is easy. And um, if you have passion, every challenge you see as a milestone of your development. And every challenge is like you're stepping forward. And when you fail, sometimes you are failing forward. Mm. So all these are things that builds you in your journey. 1992 to now is a long time, more than 30 years. But it's just like yesterday. How old were you when you started? I was about 24 years old. Yeah, when I came out of school. And I started employing people right from youth core. So how's the journey been so far? Tell us about um, you are here now. The journey has been rewarding. Okay. It's been rewarding because um, it's, you see, when you have things you want to do and you're not able to do it and time goes, it's be so painful. But when I look back, I've done a lot and I've trained a lot of people, a lot of youths. I've impacted knowledge. I've been out of this country several times and whatever I've done meets international standard. Welcome back. No doubt the interview with Inka Olagunji was insightful. Now, let's take a moment to step into the heart of his operations. Come along with me as we explore the workshop where the magic truly happens. Stay tuned for a glimpse behind the scenes of Inka Olagunju's creative sanctuary. Welcome to Home Collection Furniture Workshop. In this bustling workshop, the symphony of creativity echoes through the air as skilled artisans bring their masterpieces to life. As we step into the main factory, we are greeted by the rhythmic sounds of machinery and the scent of freshly cut wood. Here, in the heart of home collection, craftsmen meticulously craft the skeletons of furniture pieces, laying the foundation for the elegance that is to come. From sleek dining tables to luxurious sofas, each piece at home collection is a work of art, an embodiment of elegance or sophistication. Moving up to the upholstery section, we witness the transformation of raw materials into plush sitting arrangements. Skilled artisans delicately wrap fabrics around the wooden frames, adding layers of comfort and style to each piece. Despite the perception of furniture making as a masculine craft, Home Collection proudly embraces diversity with female artisans contributing their expertise to every step of the process. In the carving section, intricate designs come to life under the deft hands of master craftsmen. With precision and skill, they carve intricate patterns and motifs, 
adding a touch of artistry to every piece. Home Collection's commitment to quality extends beyond traditional craftsmanship. Modern technology is seamlessly integrated into their processes, ensuring precision and efficiency in every detail. Beyond wood, Home Collection also incorporates metals into their designs, blending materials to create stunning and durable furniture pieces. In the welding section, skilled artisans fuse metal components together, adding strength and stability to each creation. From start to finish, every aspect of production at Home Collection is meticulously monitored and perfected. The finishing touches applied in the sand papering and spraying section ensure that each piece meets international standards of quality and craftsmanship. As we conclude our journey through home collection furniture, we are reminded of the passion and dedication that infuses every corner of this workshop. From the skilled artisans to the innovative technologies, Home Collection stands as a beacon of excellence in the world of furniture making. Welcome back to The Edge as we continue with our journey into the world of furniture and craftsmanship with Inka Olagunju, the creative mind behind Home Collection. Um, the truth is, the, 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 the customers, is like fashion, yeah. demand dictates what you produce. Like you're dancing to a music, it's changed from English to music to, 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 to another, and you're still dancing the old tune. <laughs> so you have to go by what the demands are like. And a lot of these things are also dictated internationally, especially when you, ex when you ex attend international exhibitions. You see things like now this is 2024. Things you attend exhibitions and you start seeing things that will come out in 2025. So if you're opportune to you start training, and that is why those of us who are who are opportune to be educated should go as far as that, bring the knowledge and transfer it to those who may not have been as um, opportune as we are. And um, I think that is what development is about. Okay, so it's so many years down the line and you are at the top of this organization. Yeah. How do you ensure, ensure quality that your furniture keeps true to its original quality? There could be a school of thought that the MD should be in the office, but mm. I'm a hands-on MD. Mm. And uh, we play a lot of lip service to management. You see, there's a clash between management and practicality. For instance, People will say, you're not supposed to be going to the factory at this stage. You're supposed to have people. But nobody will tell a musician why he's still holding the mic. <laughs> you have to I be like there. <laughs> so if you're a creative person, you should be seen in the forefront. Because whatever you're creating, people producing for you, you should be able to correct them to the details, to the minute details. And that cannot be replicated if you're not there. Yes, you may do one or two samples. They get it, but you go there for finishing and also, and it, this is the standard all over the world. I've been to factories in China and Italy that has more than 2,000 workers. The owner of the factory stays on the floor and makes sure things go well. So it's just in Nigeria, you see a factory owner wearing suit or native, you know. <laughs> we have to be hands-on, I'm hands-on. And, you know, just like um, as I am, I, I hop and go. So what advice would you give uh, your fellow people furniture makers in this industry. And young people are watching and say, goodness, I want to try this. What advice? There's a lot of jackpot, jackpot, jackpot now. It's a little waste of time because hmm. during our time too, there was jackpot, but by the grace of God, one has reason to look back and thank God that one never did it then. So what the advice I'll give the younger ones is, whatever you are seeing as a challenge, opportunities, you understand? If you really observe, people are leaving Nigeria, but others are coming in. I drove from Lagos to Gary the other day. Left and right are factories. And these are Chinese and Indians coming to take over our country. And you see, the world is such that Africa is still underdeveloped. 
There are a lot of opportunities here. It's is undersaturated. Mm. So take advantage of all this. And I'll tell the younger ones, don't be dispersed and keep your dream focused. Never, don't give up, no matter how bad it gets. And when you fail, you get up and check what, you, what you've done wrong and pick it. But the youths coming up now, the younger ones, I beg them with all I have, there can't be a better country than this country. A great country God has given us, and that's, like you said, that's why this program has been designed to celebrate entrepreneurs like you and also encourage young ones to say you can do it. If you can do it at 24 and, I mean, and, and, and build this empire that is ongoing, then that young 25-year-old boy can also do it. Then I'm going to say something. A lot of people starting business believe they need money to start. You don't need money to start business. You need to believe in yourself. You need to have something of value that would... And you see, let me tell you, at 24, there are times I'll go to people's sites and they look at me, listen to my type of English, and based on that, by sentiment, they give me the opportunity to do the work. So if you're a graduate, you're a youth copper, you go to a site, you're an engineer, you tell somebody, I can do your burglar proofs. I can produce your gates. You stand a chance of getting that job before an uneducated person. So you don't really need money. You need to have the resilience, the passion, and the ability to go after your clients. You they are complaining you need money to start a business. You go into a bank, and you start working there, and you are giving targets. Mm. And those targets is what builds the bank. Why not set targets for yourself and build yourself? Before we proceed into the interview of our guest again, let's take a moment to hear what his friend and colleagues have to say about him. It is always fascinating to get insight about an individual from close associates. Actually, uh, I got to know him through one of his sisters and uh, observed that He's been very strong in anything he wants to do. He's, he's determined, wants to achieve a lot of things. I didn't want to work with anybody. Hmm. That time I knew him, I need to, he, and he finished from Yerba Tech. And he wanted to be on his own. So he started with welding work. I used to admire him that uh, this young man, you know, doesn't bother about anything, he just wants to succeed. And he started at a level. So he used to produce growth and chairs and supply uh, furniture shops like uh, Gucci Interiors. That time they were the foremost furniture factory in Abuja. He used to supply them from, from Lagos and was making small money. Being a very determined person, he feels yes, he can make it and that you know, there's opportunity for him in Nigeria to make it. At this stage, you know, a lot of his friends have traveled out of the country. That time, Jack Powell syndrome was very in vogue that time. But he believed that there are so much opportunity in Nigeria. So, and then he started, we started, we started from Lagos and eventually to Abuja. I happened to leave my dad a long time ago to Lagos to fight for myself. And I come across there, Mr. Inca. And I joined him, he accepted me, even without money. So he took me as a younger brother. Even the whole family accepted me. I've been with him for over 25 years now. It's because of his lifestyle. I call him my mentor. Because from a military family, I now meet somebody that has enough discipline for me. So I have to stay with him because of the discipline first. I remember vividly the mom, may I so rest in peace, she was into um, production of um, chair backs, uh, then, and then dining table, um, co uh, clothing cover, you know, back then, I'm talking of 83, 84, back then. So, and he was actually very involved in that process, even while we were in school. During the holidays, he was involved in it. So, he has always had that, um, niche for anything production 
in our final year, uh, our project was um, design and fabrication of automatic gates. These gates that operate automatically. We, in fact, it was the number one project in our sets. He virtually fabricated it. I did the theoretical designs and everything. Why he did the practical designs. So Yinka has always been someone that has um, always loved, you know, being in the production sector. So I'm not surprised that he dwelled because even though he's into furniture, it's a production activity. Whether we like it or not, this is a business. What's the market like currently? How are you getting back? When we started, the requirements then were such that we had to get a big showroom, about 300 square meters. Those days we expected, we were relying on working customers. When I had the first showroom, I now expanded to a second showroom. Then one of my friends, the Chinese, came to Nigeria and said I was expanding, that it wasn't necessary, that the world order is people are collapsing, that everything is online. True. So I, I still felt, you know, being a Nigerian, what do you mean? I can't, but with time, all those came to pass. What matters most now is you don't even need a showroom. Mm. You just need to have products. Get the young people with kids in photography. They take your product shot. They put it on Instagram, and you can sell anywhere in the world. So that is also, we too have learned from the younger people the hard way by okay. collapsing that big structure, structure into what the world does now. Where the world is going. Did you Produce products and they post them online and they sell more. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting technique. But that's what technology makes it easy for us yeah. to do business. Yeah. The ease of yeah. doing business. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The life of an entrepreneur. You are the head of this organization, having employed so many people. What should your lifestyle be like? How do you manage what you have built? The lifestyle of an entrepreneur should be that of discipline because you also have people watching you, your staff. If they see you are very extravagant, they will believe you're using their efforts to <laughs> live a lavish lifestyle. So once they see it's, it's in collection of moving the organization forward, they will be of more understanding. So you have to invest more into your business. Okay. That's what matters most. Okay, so where do you see the, the furniture industry? And um, where do you see it in the next, in the future? Because as it is, some people still import furniture into this country. I forgot to tell you before I started the furniture production, I was also importing. Oh. Yeah, I was importing. And whenever I go abroad on exhibition to go and produce, I get more inquisitive in the production process. And someone of engineering background, most of the processes are so demystified because I know, so it was easy for me to copy the technology and bring back home. And also, you'll be shocked. Between that time and now, our boys have improved. There are chairs you see, you don't believe they are made in Nigeria. There are things that can go hand in hand with the importation. But you see, we just need to keep encouraging them. Some people have this mentality of, I can't buy made in Nigeria. Well, they have a complex. Like when I travel, I take a lot of videos to train people. And apart from that, there are times I call my workers, I put a big screen, mm. and I, I always made on YouTube. Mm. That's instructional. Mm. You know, they learn online how it's made. You know, it's like you've taken them to the factory abroad. Yes. So when they see how it's made, they add it to their knowledge, and they are willing to learn. Okay. And once in a while, to encourage them, when you are going on those trips, you could pick your foreman, the head, like, what well, just one of them to go with you that this is how things are done. I've done that severally. And it also boosts their morale. Their morale. Yeah. That's yeah. Interesting. So people are watching as if, wow, this man studied um, uh, production, production in, uh, engineering. He, he's been on hands MD. He has done this, he has done that. I'm sure you have a family life going on. Yeah, of course. Tell me, well, how do you relax? Or is it for you work? work and work or sometimes okay do you know what i need to take a breather and if you have to take a breather tell us how you do it yeah relaxation i i work all the time 
but also I find time to relax, like I play golf. Oh, you play golf. I also take time off to listen to live music. I like live band. Who is your favorite live musician? Do you have any or anyone? Those days it was Fela. Because <laughs> <laughs> we, as students, we used to go to Fela a lot to watch Fela in the shrine. Okay. But now I just watch and all the live bands around. Mm. There are so many gardens around where, you see, I, I love live music because it's creative. Mm. As we come to the end of today's episode of The Edge, I hope you have been inspired by the incredible journey of Mr. Inka Olagunju, the MD, CEO of Home Collections. From exploring the elegance of African woods and metals to witnessing the passion and innovation behind his craft, it is clear that Mr. Olagunju is a true master crafter in the world of furniture making. Join us next time for more entrepreneurial insights, innovation, and inspiration. My name is Patience Abba. Until then, remember to always push boundaries and stay on the edge.